Okay, so now that that's in the audience, you see what I'm saying? Time to shoot the breeze now, unless we're doing something else, which we are. Okay, so chicken adobo. So I am from the Philippines, and every Filipino has their own version of adobo. So um, you can use chicken, you can use pork. Sometimes it's chicken and pork adobo. But um, I don't know. I just so I, I've been making it with chicken. I just keep forgetting to do it with pork. It's just like a habit thing. And it's so easy that this is one of those things that um, when I was when I first moved out of the house and I thought, oh, I'm gonna invent a dish that's like, oh, saute some garlic and soy sauce and put some vinegar. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Oh, it's adobo. So I could have invented adobo if it didn't exist already. So it's one of those things that different families have their own version. And it's super easy. This is one of the things that we used to use. Uh, we used to um, have for picnics. My mom used to make this and it keeps really well. And I, sa I said earlier on, um, it actually improves, uh, the flavor improves over several days, which is why we try to make it at least a day before. Many foods are that way. Actually, the lasagna will also taste uh, better the next day, but we're having that tonight. Um, so chicken adobo, you're, let's, let's um, get a skillet or a wok, and we're gonna start that process. Okay. So this is um, chicken thighs. Um, Asians, I'm gonna generalize for uh, one fourth of the world, but, but we tend to like, dark meat because it has more flavor so i tend to get thighs now only the top three um has skin i've removed the skin from the others already the reason i kept this is because uh we're gonna fry with that so that we get the oils uh, and then you're gonna get more chicken flavor okay so that's that and then you can use pork you can actually we also have adobo um using a vegetable which is not available here it's morning glory um, and the sauce is pretty much the same. It's gonna be soy sauce, vinegar. I'm just using an apple cider vinegar. You need peppercorns, bay leaf, and garlic. Okay, we're gonna start off with garlic. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna um, smash a few because I like it garlicky. I'm probably gonna use uh, maybe four, okay? And I will, I mentioned this last week, uh, why garlic is the first thing that we should be preparing. But let me clear these guys. Last week, I was talking about uh, reading a book from Joe Robinson called Eating on the Wild Side. And basically, um, garlic has allicin, which is the phytonutrient, which is responsible for all the beautiful health effects um, you know, it's, it's helpful. Uh, th there are studies that it's helpful towards um, cardiovascular and also cancer. But uh, allicin, which is a compound, which is a, a compound made out of two, one, two, okay, I did say four, uh, two, um, an enzyme and a protein. Uh, one of the, the elements that make up allicin is heat sensitive. So if you cook it right away, you're gonna lose all the benefits of uh, garlic. So allicin basically will just, will just disappear if you, if you just cook it, okay? Heat will do that. However, apparently, according to an Israeli study, if you just allow it 10 minutes for the two elements, the protein and the enzyme, to co-mingle after crushing or slicing, then you actually get the allicin form and it's not destroyed by your cooking. So you want to, you want to do this um, first, your garlic, whatever process you're doing, and just leave it for 10 minutes. And if we're doing it as the first step, I think 10 minutes is easy enough to, uh, it's not a long time to wait for all the others to cook. Okay, I'm using a pestle and mortar, just my preferred way. You can use the, the back of your knife. 
I just like to cut also the ends of, let's see, yep. Yeah. And then I'm gonna crush it. So crushing or making it really small means you are exposing as much of the oils as possible, which, which means it's, it's releasing the most. So general rule of thumb, it's about surface area. When you expose a lot of surface area, you are definitely getting more of that yumminess. In this case, the garlickiness. But the smaller it is, the, also the quicker it burns. So you have to be careful, okay? So we're just smashing. And this is, as I said, we'll try to make sure we have 10 minutes. So the first thing we're gonna do, we are gonna brown some chicken, especially the ones with the, the ones that had skin on because we wanna get the oils of that. Okay, that's pretty much it. Leave that alone for 10 minutes. Should be okay. Done with the garlic. Marlene, this is Anna. I just have a quick question about the vinegar. Oh, yes. So I had pickled some red onions and I had saved the vinegar from it. Um, do you think that that's an okay to vinegar to use? Because I'd like to try it. Yes, yes, totally. Um, you can use any vinegar. Um, in fact, you know, this is, this is where families differ because some like it really tart and some like it more mellow. And, uh, you know, once in a while you can play around, you can use wine because wine sort of mellows it out. Um, so yes, go ahead. That's, uh, it's one of those things that you'll figure out whether you like it. And if you like it, then, then that's that. <laughs> okay. Right. But, but really, I tell you, every Filipino family will have this a little bit different. Okay. okay, so, and feel free to keep asking questions because there's one more thing that I actually found out. It was really weird. So I had a little story, but I went to a friend's party and another friend decided to make uh, Philippine, he's from, he's an American and he made Filipino adobo according to a book that he read and he brought it in and it was this coconut based um, dish. And I'm like, it's not adobo. We don't have coconut milk in our um, in, in adobo. Well, it turns out that, uh, which I didn't realize, in, in different parts of the Philippines, they tell you, it's like adobo is made differently. And there is a region that uses coconut milk. They, they add it. And what makes it the adobo is the, the vinegar, the addition of the vinegar. So um, I always thought it was the soy sauce vinegar combination that made it adobo. But... Um, yeah, if you go to another part of the Philippines, they'll say, uh-uh, it's coconut milk and um, it's a vinegar. So, okay, uh, so let's see. I'm gonna use uh, a neutral oil. When I'm, use, when I'm cooking Asian, I don't like olive oil. So I'm gonna use avocado oil. Uh, in terms of health benefits, very good. Plus it's uh, rated for high. Not that we're gonna be cooking high. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit because the chicken skin will be rendering too. Okay, so I will put just enough to coat. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention about the chicken, make sure that it's dry, okay? Because um, in general, when you are, uh, pan frying or cooking meats. The idea of the moisture getting in means you are diluting whatever flavor. Yes, we are gonna be adding water to the adobo, but, um, but you wanna make sure that it's because you wanted to add the liquid and not that, ah, it's just coming out of all your, all your ingredients because you forgot to pat it dry. Oh, so what's, what's the heat we're going for, Marlene, for the chicken? Okay, so we are basically, um, we're frying the skin so that we can remove the, we can, we can render the fat. So for now it's high. We're going to lower that later. Okay. Get my your, your thighs look like they have bones in them. Is that right? Yes. And okay. you don't have to have bones. It just so happens. That's what I have. What that just means is, um, the bone chicken, anything that's bone cooks longer. Mine is bone too. So I'm on par with you. 
Okay, good. So any water you have is going to make it also um, sputtered. And then make sure you have a container because we're going to remove that. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned all the ingredients that we're going to need. Black peppercorn, bay leaf, soy sauce, and vinegar. Okay, so just make sure it's on hand. And I think I'm gonna add the other chicken too. Now you don't wanna overcrowd uh, when you're cooking because if it's too full, what happens is you're actually steaming because it'll release so much moisture all at the same time. And then that's steaming and steaming, which means it's near boiling, has a totally different effect from when you're frying. Okay, so just make sure it's not overcrowded and we're not going to cook it completely i just want to uh brown it a little bit uh get the skins crisp and then i'm going to peel this because i don't like the skin actually in my adobo so all i'm doing is rendering the fat so if my um oil is audible and bubbling a little bit does that mean that i didn't get enough moisture out of my chicken uh, could be, but you know what? It's it's hard to remove every single thing. Um, you're just what you just want to do is remove as much moisture as possible so that it's not uh, releasing too much, and also uh, because that's what causes it to sputter. And it's dangerous actually when you put like really wet stuff in hot hot oil because because you can get accidents from that. So yeah, don't worry. A little bit of uh, sputtering is not a big deal. And since this is browning, I'm just going to put away some stuff that... Uh, sorry, while we're waiting for this. So um, I'm particularly psyched to see Melissa because Melissa used to be my piano student. Melissa! So how are you? Good. Since we're just waiting for the, for the chicken anyway. Um, so are you... Oh, did you move already? You said you were going to move. Yes. Yes, move last yeah. week. And uh, are you wait? I'm gonna I'm gonna like cancel the spotlight. So you moved last weekend. Are you completely done with the moving? Completely done with moving. Everything unpacked. Just need to kind of decorate, put up pictures and stuff. Okay. Well, that's the fun part, right? Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of a nice time to move because I have so much free time. So. Oh. I think most people have a lot of free time now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, are you cooking the... Oh, wait, sorry. Melissa, what are you cooking? I'm cooking the chicken. The chicken? Okay. Where are you now? At what point? Um, I just put it in the oil. Is it going to... Do I flip it? Uh, it's kind yeah. of bubbling. Wait, the, the sharks have skin. It doesn't wow. have skin and it doesn't have bones. Okay, if you don't have skin or bone, you're you're not really cooking this through. Just you can remove it already. You're ahead of the game. Even though I only put it on one side. In fact, what? I only have it down on one side. So is that oh, fine? Do it on the other side just a little bit. So all it does is, um, you know, so when you're eating your adobo, basically it'll take the color of the soy sauce. But you know, it's kind of nice to see brown rather than this pale white flesh, right? So that's the reason for that. It used to be that browning was supposed to lock the moisture in, but apparently that's been proven wrong. So it's more like an aesthetic thing. Now, in the case of the skin- Just have oil in the pan right now, or is there something else that's supposed to be in the pan? Right now, it's just, I'll, I'll, it's right now, it's just the chicken that's frying. I'm just. You see, I, I have a step that you guys don't have because I have skin. Okay. And all I'm doing is rendering the oil because that's extra chicken flavor that I'm trying to get. I'll, I'll switch back to the camera so you can see it. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get that, but I'll get that out soon. And these guys, since they don't have skin, yeah, oh, that one does. Well, we don't have to cook it through. Unless you're eating fried skin, which sometimes I do, then you'll really want to cook it. But if it's just for rendering, you don't have to do it all the way, okay? At this point, 
let's add some peppercorns because we want peppercorns. And I don't know, uh, let's see, that's about probably two teaspoons worth. If you like pepper, then be liberal, okay? And the reason I'm adding it now is because it's toasting the spice, which is kind of nice. A lot of people don't do it that way. I just happen to do that because when you talk, when you do also Indian cooking, you find out that um, cooking the spice brings it really out. So I'm removing this, oops, so I can put in the others. Marlene, just a question yeah. on the actual whole peppercorns versus pepper. You know, what's the recommendation on using the whole peppercorns versus just putting pepper in? So um, I tend to do both for this dish. It's one of those dishes where you really want to have the whole peppercorn in. And when you toast it like this, because you can't do this when it's brown. So this is, this is actually when you, when you toast it while it's whole. So you get the flavor without having to, uh, like, it's, I'm trying to think how, let's see, it disperses the flavor, but it's a little bit different than when it's already ground up. But we are gonna use ground pepper, pepper later on. Okay. So I'm just removing the blood, you see? That's all. I have about, how many more? Three more chickens. See, it's a good thing to do while waiting for the macaroni. I mean macaroni, the lasagna. So guys, come on, talk to me. Tell me what's happening in your part of the world if uh, while we're doing this, because this is the one that's taking time. It's boring to just look at this. <laughs> so Marlene, just another question on the chicken. So we're not oh, trying to cook it all the way. We're not trying to cook it all the way through. We're just, yes. We're just yeah. serious. Right now. Good question. Yes, we are not because it's going to cook in the sauce. So I'm just kind of like uh, browning it a little bit just so that it has a nice color on its own. And so as soon as, for example, this, like it's still bloody in, but it's still brown enough. That's okay. That's done. Okay. And then if you were, if you're cooking with skin, remove the skin already when it's out. And after we do the chicken, we're gonna do the garlic. Uh, so that should be 10 minutes, I would think. I only have one more left. And so I can remove the chicken skin while waiting for these guys. Now, chicken skin, I remove if it's not, um, in, if it's in a saucy dish because then the skin is just this really like limp thing, which is not exactly appetizing. I love chicken skin when it's fried, like fried chicken, oh my God, which um, I haven't made in a while, so, okay. Last one. Ooh. All right, we're gonna be doing the garlic soon. So also make sure you have your soy sauce and vinegar on hand because uh, that's what we're gonna use to, to uh, stop it from cooking right away when you start the glazing. The glazing is when you put liquids in and then you can remove any little bits, although this one doesn't have that much. Also, if you have excess oil, so let's see, this has, this rendered a lot of oil, so I'm actually gonna remove some of that afterwards. Okay, that's done. Marlene, what kind of vinegar should I use? Um, what do you have? I have uh, white vinegar, I have apple cider, and I think I have a little bit of red wine vinegar. Okay, um, you know, like the Philippine style really is white, white vinegar, okay. uh, but, but I don't do that. I'm actually using, I also have white vinegar, but I like playing around with it. So I'm using apple cider today. So oh. your call, what do you want to use? I'll try apple cider. 
All righty, go for it. By the way, apple cider, if you have the mother, which means it's not, um, it's not pasteurized or anything, you get, because uh, okay, I like talking about microbiome and stuff, you know, anything that's healthy. So if you, if you get, for example, this is just a bottle, because I actually have a big jar, big bottle somewhere and I just like keep refilling it. So it's, it's unfiltered, you can see, because it has what they call the mother, which means um, it's unpasteurized and you have all the uh, beautiful, uh, this is a prebiotic, or is it a probiotic? It's a, I think it's probiotic. A pro, right? It's the probiotic, pro. which means this actually has the beautiful bacteria that's healthy for your um, microbiome. But once you cook it, it's gone. So, so it, it doesn't matter now because we're cooking it, but meaning for salad dressings or any way that you can sneak it in, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna remove a bit of the excess oil. So oil, you can remove, you can remove at this point, which is good, but, but when a dish is cooked and you refrigerate it, you might notice that the oil goes on top. You can also skim it off the following day if it's a really oily dish. But since I can do it now, I'm gonna do it now. Marlene? Yes? What kind of pan is it? I love that pan you have. Uh, you mean the, the, this sort of, it's not quite a wok. It's really yes. funny. I bought this in, a, in an Asian market. It's really cheap, but so many people have been asking me about it. I'm going to show you because, because of the little beehive pattern. But um, it's, when you say what kind, it's, uh, there's no particular brand. It's a cheap one I bought in the Quincy Asian market. And it's so cheap style that the, the back says, uh, there's a misspelled, uh, like this is metal or whatever, and then metal is misspelled something else. <laughs> so it's probably like 25 bucks. <laughs> nice pen. Yeah. I know I had to post it on Facebook because everyone was like, oh, what, what's his pen? And then I showed them the back, which is Mr. Galvego. That's really what it says. Okay, I just removed excess oil. Now let's put the garlic in. Now remember, it's a hot pan. So, although I lowered mine, so just make sure that the heat isn't so high because this is crushed garlic. You don't want it to burn. We just want it uh, to release the yumminess. So that's about maybe one minute, a minute uh, of smelling the garlic. Wash my hands, sticky. Oh, God. Can you, can you smell it? Are you smelling your garlic? This is my. Yeah, but I will, I'm sure. Woohoo. Actually, you know, when, when this is uh, done, we can actually just add the chicken. We don't even have to do the soy sauce first. The, the order doesn't really matter too much, so don't worry about it. And in fact, I think that's what I'll do. So all I'm doing is waiting for it to release a little bit more of the garlicness, the oil. I'm not toasting it, okay? So this is pretty much... Hmm. I think that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna put in the chicken. And you know what? Uh, if you have some extra liquid in the chicken, just put them in because we're gonna use it anyway. And now let's add our liquid. I am gonna have a... Marlene, does it need to be skin up or skin down? It looks like your skin is down. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter, okay. No, this is one of those, I tell you, I could have invented this when I was starting off. I didn't realize uh, how easy it was. And then I'm putting maybe, uh, let's see, I don't know, just about maybe three tablespoons of the soy sauce. We're not measuring and maybe, right now, equal amount. And then we're gonna add water because this is gonna be bracing. So let's get my uh, 
And you want to have enough sauce that everything cooks. So let me get a So about how much vinegar did you do? I put about, for now, because it's easy to adjust later, uh, about maybe three tablespoons each of vinegar and soy sauce. Okay. And then we'll, we'll adjust everything later. So right now, we want to cook the chicken. That's, that's the goal. Yeah, like this is really this good. Is really light. So I'm just gonna add more sauce. And as it cooks down, this is gonna evaporate. And then when it's when the chicken is cooked, we can taste. Okay, so right now it's on high. And then put your bay leaf in. You can do depending on how much chicken you have, uh, one or two. Okay, I want one or two. Maybe I'll put two. There, baby. By the way, I saw a bay leaf um, tree. I didn't realize that they were trees. I thought they were bushes. And when I was farming, I, I interned in France um, as a farmer <laughs> because I really wanted to learn about farming. And the tree was about 12 feet high. It was pretty cool, the bay laurel um, tree. Okay, so right now we're just waiting for that to cook. So you just want to cook through the chicken, and as I said, bone, bone in takes a while. Um, let's check on not the time with Alexa. Alexa, how much time do I have on? You have eight minutes and thirty seconds left on your forty-minute timer. Ooh, okay. I wonder if the adobo will cook before the before our lasagna is done. Ha ha! But anyway, so again, we're back to the we're waiting. So we can we can talk again. <laughs> so uh, tell me what's happening on your end. Are you guys on the same um, on the same uh, stage as I am? When it comes to the chicken, yes, because I'm okay. not lasagna. Good. So, what do you do with the uh, excess oil? You can toss it, or you can reuse it for other stuff because it's it's flavorful fat, right? But um, I tend to toss it because I don't use I, I, you know, it's easy enough to get chicken fat if you have enough chickens with skin. All right, you really don't need to touch this. This is pretty much, you know, we're waiting. We're not seasoning additional. We want, we want the liquids to evaporate. That's way too light for an adobo. Although you can, you know, adobo can be really, really dark if you're using a particularly dark soy sauce. I'm using actually tamari. This is gluten-free Japanese soy sauce, um, which, is, uh, which is fairly dark, but there are actually really almost viscous black soy sauce that's available. So all of those things change the coloring. Um, and in the end, it's like the flavors, right? So, so I think I mentioned that this was one of those things my mom used to make for picnics. And the Philippines, we're, we're a tropical country. And uh, because of the vinegar, we didn't know it at the time. It's just one of those things that you knew that, you know, it could stay out for hours in the heat. Um, and it would be okay. We didn't get sick. None of us died. So, um, you know, because in, in the, the rule of thumb, you know, you, you don't really want to leave food out uh, for, if it's, if it's cool, two hours is your maximum. If it's a hot uh, place like the, the tropics, um, one hour is, is already like, you know, a little bit, you should be a little bit nervous. But, but those are the usual guidelines. The, um, FDA has that kind of guideline for food too, but there are always exceptions. So vinegar is, is um, something um, that 
kills the bacteria. So it, it, it makes it really hard for bacteria to set in. Um, and there's a ratio of your, your whether it's acidic or base, etc., that makes it harder mm -hmm. for for um, pathogens to come in. So um, it's just one of those things that at least I feel safer, you know, if it's left out a little bit longer than the two hours, chicken adobo is pretty much going to be okay. So we used to have it hours afterwards in the sun. Okay. Um, let's see. What else do we have to prepare? Uh, oh, our the chicken is cooking. Do we need to flip it at all or it just stays hanging out? Just hangs out. This is one of those, like, you can do stuff. It's easy. All you want to do is make sure the chicken is cooked through, and then, and then we'll fix the sauce after. So this is why it's like everyone makes it. It's like your super easy traditional adobo. And you can, as I said, so we have this uh, with pork. Sometimes you even mix pork and chicken together. And with vegetables, um, uh, morning glory is like, uh, well, we do have morning glory here, and it, but but we use we know it as the flower, so it's related to that, and it's I guess it's like a water spinach is the closest it gets. Okay, let's see. Let's prep for uh, whoever's making this. Oh, it looks like I'm. I think I'm the only one making lasagna, right? So yeah. let's make sure um, that is going to come out soon. Let's see. I don't think I need. The only thing I need is actually I don't need anything. So I'm just gonna tidy up while we're waiting. And don't taste your chicken if your chicken is raw, okay? I know it, I always talk about like, you, it's very important to keep tasting as you go along, but not when you have raw chicken because you can get sick. Raw vegetables, you can. A quick question on the chicken. All my chicken thighs are different sizes, so I just took temperatures. And the littlest one is at 165. So should I take them out? Uh, no, just leave it in. Okay. It's bracing and it's all going to be good. Okay. And we're still going to be adding uh, soy sauce and vinegar, possibly later on. Marlene. Yes. Start with one. I the temperature check, and my chicken is like at, you know, cooked temperature. So I lowered the temp. Um, yes, yes, simmer, simmer. Um, and then how's your liquid ratio? Can you show me your, your chicken? I just wanna see. I just gotta make sure not to spill the sauce on my computer. I don't think my boss would be very happy. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that's that's a good amount. Um, so if your chicken looks, do you think it's cooked? It, you're, you're doing with bone, right? It's with bone and I took the temperatures, so they're all at 165. Okay, um, you know how to check it also if, uh, if it's cooked without using a thermometer? I would love to hear what you think. Okay, you just pierce it with, uh, with a knife through the bone. If, if it's releasing clear fluids, that's cooked. If you're still seeing blood, it's not. Ah, I am like, still seeing some blood, so. Yeah, so no, that's not. So in fact, like I'm seeing it also in mine, that's why I know it's not cooked, but it could be, what happened to my tongue? My tongue disappeared. Oh, there you go. Huh. Make sure whatever is still raw gets the, gets the liquid because that's how it's cooking um it because while while it's really really good to be using a temperature um a thermometer i'm sorry it's where you poke it that matters because if you happen to poke it in an area where it happens to be dry then it will register that it's cooked so you it's just useful to know it um in different ways and i just know yeah over because like the meat the, the brunt of the meat on these thighs is like under where the skin is so I just yeah. okay yeah so flip it if if it was like like if the liquid was all over then you don't have to but which is which was the case in mine at first but now it's reduced a bit so yeah adjust it so that um it's all exposed it, basically if it's hitting the liquid it's cooking that's your that's basically what's happening 
All right, let's sit, let's check on mine too to see the bone. I'm gonna switch camera. Oh wait, wait, I, I shouldn't forget the broiling. I think I heard Alexa actually earlier. Let's double check that. Easy to get distracted, you know, when you're broiling and then it's like, uh oh, okay, not yet. Alexa, set the timer for two minutes. Timer for how long? Two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Okay, Alexa, stop. All right, I think. I don't know if you can see this. See, mine is still oozing a little bit of blood, so that's not yet done. Melissa, you're boneless. It's, yours must be done by now, right? It, yeah, it looks done. I wasn't sure if I should take it out yet. Um, just keep it on low. Just wait for me and, because we'll, we'll start um, tasting it. So mine, mine has a lot of liquid that I still want to um, reduce. So, so the adobo is one of those things that you want to have a lot of sauce because it it goes really nice on the rice. Like ugh, you you want to dredge your rice with this. So adobo and rice is like a really really good pairing. Uh, but you want it to be a tasty sauce and not just a watered down thing, which is why. I, although I'm reducing it to remove the excess water, I will be adding more soy sauce and vinegar to just replace that lost moisture. And, you know, ideally, if this wasn't a class, you would just like let it go on a slow simmer and leave it be for, you know, 45 minutes. But I'm trying to fast track, uh, which is why I'm boiling. When you, when you hard boil, what happens is um, it affects the proteins. It, it doesn't change the flavor, but, but the hard boil will release what you call the scum. You see those little things that come out. That's denatured protein. Aha, Alexa, stop. I'm gonna check on the broiler again. It's good to have a reminder every so often. That might be actually ready to, to flavor soon. I just wanna check the lasagna. Oh, get in there. We don't have the hottest broiler, so Alexa, set the timer for two minutes. Two minutes, starting now. Okay, I'm gonna taste my, I'm gonna taste this now. So, I know, I know it's hard because we're not together, but um, the kind of flavor you want is, uh, you, you definitely want to have the soy saucy flavor and then enough of a bite from the vinegar. Um, that is of course subjective because different people have different tolerances for uh, tartness. So this becomes something that you can make your own, which is what all the Filipino families do. But I will definitely add more. In fact, I'm gonna do it now. I'm probably gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce, if I'm, I'm just guessing. And remember, I said some, sometimes it has to do with the kind of soy sauce you use or the kind of vinegar. Some are stronger than others. And same thing, about two tablespoons. I am also gonna salt and pepper. I like pepper, so. Mm. And I will try that again. 
Marlene, just another quick question. So Mari as well, I know it's not like completing the low sodium necessarily. Wait, sorry, let me just, Alexa, stop. Go on, sorry, you, it's, you're using Tamari and then what? And so I don't think I have like a completely low sodium version. So if you're trying to be mindful of sodium, would you recommend like, how would you recommend to, you know, adjust the sauce and maybe like, you know. Ha, huh. well, um, yeah. So, so you are trying to reduce your sodium. Um, well, there are low sodium versions of tamari and other soy sauces. That's one possibility. Right. Um, and, and then, because if you put salt as a equivalent, that's the same. So basically, I guess you're short of using the, you know, less sodium versions of the soy sauces. Um, it might just be a little bit less salty is what will happen with yours. I mean, if, there are other ways to adjust, but this is not traditional for adobo. But for example, um, fish sauce is not something we use in adobo, but the vegetarian equivalent of fish sauce is mushroom powder. So if you really thought it was not salty enough, but you really wanted to have more of the saltiness, you can use um, uh, alternatives like that. Let me, let me check on the... That's Are you right. familiar with ma mushroom powder? Yeah, I, I actually, I well, I sort of, I'm like, don't have exact mushroom powder, but Trader Joe's makes this one. Yeah. Um, so I figure I'll just try it in this moment. I have clear liquid, so I'm super excited. Okay, so your chicken is cooked, so now it's all really about your, your sauce, okay? So the sauce, as I said, it becomes subjective at this point, but based on... Um, Earlier, I just gave you the uh, a starting run on how much soy sauce and, vin and vinegar to put. Add it. Oh, wow. Wow, that they, they definitely tastes better. So you want to reduce, um, when you reduce sauces, what happens is you are evaporating the excess moisture. And that concentrates the flavor. So... When it's reducing the water, I'm adding soy sauce and vinegar because I, I still want a lot of liquid because as I said, I like it to, to uh, drench my rice. Um, so you're not removing flavor when you add more of that. You're replacing the, the moisture with, uh, the water moisture with the soy sauce and the vinegar. Now, you see, I, you know it's hard to see, but there's a lot of oil in this dish, I can see it, which means tomorrow, after refrigeration, there's gonna be a coat of oil that I'm gonna skim. But at this point, taste it again. Yeah, I just want to reduce mine more, but that's pretty much it. All right, where are you guys? Can I see, can I see where you are and have you tasted anything Yet. I honestly don't want to adjust my sauce. I love it. You like it? It works? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So uh, and everything's cooked. So that means that's done. You see how easy that is? Um, tomorrow, if you're going to eat it today, try to remember the flavor. And then tomorrow, have it again. Because it's going to be better tomorrow. It's going to be hard because it's, it's Taco Tuesday and James is coming home. I forgot Cinco de Mayo, happy Cinco de Mayo. That's right, I didn't even think about that. Like, what? I don't have a drink in hand, but I'm gonna have to virtually drink. I'll, I'll do it after all the cooking. Okay, so. I don't know it's gonna last. We only have three thighs, so. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys, if you, so one of the things I'm, I'm writing pretty much about um, cooking strategies, and one of the things, um, because like Jeff and I both cook, but we don't cook every single day. We, we cook a few times a week, but we do have a lot of leftovers, uh, not just from the week, but like from months, sometimes even years, because we have a freezer down. It's a really good idea if you can, if you can have that option, get a freezer, um, because 
you can freeze leftovers, most of them. You can also take advantage of bulk discounts and sales, et cetera, when it happens. Um, or like when you're in a pandemic and you need to go out um, as little as possible. And we used to go out two, three times grocery shopping every week. And now it's like three times a month or two, three times a month. So I'm like, oh my God, we have to stock up. So it's good to have a freezer. But um, that also means um, my advice would be cook uh, a lot. So we tend to cook uh, times three of us. So we're only two here. So we always cook like for at least six people, six people. And then you have always all these leftovers. It's like an assembly line. You have all these things from different dishes. And then you learn to cobble them together into what we call beau rest. Beau rest is French for beautiful leftovers. I'm coining it because, because there's a lot of like negative bias with the words leftovers. That's another story. I, I did tell that story last week about the historical bias towards uh, leftovers. And, and so to counter it, I, I want to rename it. So that's why I call it bow rest. So then you can see that, for example, this lasagna is a bow rest because I just repurposed leftovers. So, and that's a beautiful dish in itself. Um, so my chicken adobo, I think it's pretty much done. I wanna check in also on Melissa because you're cooking Adobo too. Mm. Okay. Mm. I just have, um, I added some more water because it was getting, the sauce was getting really thick. Can you show me? Can you show me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Okay. And so how does it, how does it taste? And you have the, that's a good color too. So it tastes really good. good. It tastes good already? Yeah. See, if you're happy with that, then that's it. Like I like to, mine, I'm, I'm adding a little bit more vinegar because I do like the tartness. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. I added a little bit of soy sauce, but I added more vinegar to get that taste to come through. Right, yeah. I know, So that's that's those are like the things you balance out and yeah, I do, I do like the vinegar taste. God, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more. Yeah, it's nice to have it, the tartness coming out. And I think that's it, let's see. Yep. All right, so let's do one more look at my adobo. So, uh, because we're not eating this tonight, I'm not presenting this, but you know, this is this is your ordinary uh, fare for picnics for whatever. And so, if you plated this, I'm still cooking it because I want to reduce the sauce. If you just plate it, plate it over the rice with a lot of sauce, and then because there's no color, it's just a drab brown. This goes well with tomatoes on the side. You can just garnish it that way. So then you have red and brown, and if your rice is white or whatever color. I use black rice a lot, so it would be cool with that too. But it's always a good idea to have some color. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's done with that. This is great. I know that James is going to be upset that I didn't use a recipe because I won't remember what I did, and he's going to want it to be the same <laughs> next oh, time. Oh, you know, um, I take videos of, of um, the classes. I just haven't posted anything yet, So, but it, I'm trying to edit some of them down but as, as soon as they're out you know you can just refer to them anytime because I figure people we don't cook with recipes in this class because we're just like winging and in fact it's good because the principles are actually uh, transferable across several dishes so once you know certain ways of doing something it's easy to kind of adapt it to other dishes so uh, one of the things we talk about is like you know aromatics, make sure you cook it out in the beginning because then you can release all the beautiful oils, um, stuff like that, and the use of sauces. So, yes. so Love it. Yeah. Hey, I want to thank everyone again for being part of um, the Refined Cook. Well, wherever you are, be safe and be well. And I hope to see you again next week. All right. You guys take care, Anna. Everyone else, Kimberly. Bye.
Bye. Happy Cinco. Oh, yeah. Bye, Merlin. Drink for me. Drink for me. Put it up, 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 up,